Back in 2007, my grandpa finally lost his 20-year battle with leukemia. My grandma didn't manage well, being alone in the house they lived in together for nearly 60 years. We moved grandma into an assisted living residence a few months later, and for insurance reasons, my parents asked if I'd like to live in the house so that I could take care of it, and also to move out and not live at home. I said absolutely. I remember right after Grandpa passed away, strange things started happening. Grandpa's portrait in the living room fell off its hook, picture frames containing pictures of him flipped onto their front during the night. I didn't mind though, because I thought my grandma was making it up. Before I moved in, my family got a big dumpster so we could clean some of the clutter out of the house. Since we'd spend most of the day cleaning and it was summer, we brought the family dog with us. My grandpa loved that dog dearly. Since he passed away, my dog wouldn't go down to the basement anymore, where my grandpa spent most of his time. My dog refused to go into the basement at all, and barked at the stairway a few times. The dog barking was weird, since she almost never did that. It finally made me think, he's here. I moved in shortly after. While living there, things went missing all the time. I bought a new lock set to change the back door lock, brought it home and put it in the cupboard to tackle on the weekend. A few days later, when I went to replace the lock, the set was gone. After a week of searching, I finally found it in the trunk of my uncle's old 2002 BMW, which he stored in the garage. My grandpa was always a prankster, so I almost came to expect these occurrences. He used to wake up at 5.30 a.m. every morning to listen to the early news in the kitchen. I'd wake up some mornings and the radio would be on. I often heard typewriter noises coming from his office in the basement. It was comforting. I found myself talking to my grandpa out loud, having conversations with him. I missed him. After about six months, suddenly I didn't hear any more noises. Nothing was going missing. The radio wasn't turning on at 5.30. I shrugged it off for a few days, but it started to worry me. I went back to my parents and grabbed the dog, brought her back. She was apprehensive at first, but she entered the house. This time, though, she went downstairs and went right to his office. Nothing was any different about the room, but she wasn't barking. She wasn't pacing. She wasn't doing anything. That's when I realized he was gone. I broke down. Suddenly, I felt incredibly alone. Even though it had been about eight months since he died, it was the first time I felt like he was gone. Whenever I was scared as a kid, my dad always told me that in life, you should not be afraid of ghosts. Fear the living, because they can hurt you. In my late teenage years, I received an inheritance after my father had committed suicide. At the time of my dad's passing, he and my mom owned a cabin up in Oregon by Mount Bachelor. The cabin was going to be put up for sale, since my mom could no longer afford the payments and renting it wouldn't cover the payments either. The cabin was set to go on the market for sale in less than a month, and we were in the process of finalizing all the paperwork. So for a month's time, the cabin was not going to be rented out and was to be vacant. I saw this as a chance to get away for a while and clear my head in light of all the things going on. I quit work, packed up my snowboarding gear, grabbed my dog, and headed up to the cabin in my dad's car. My first two days at the cabin were average, and nothing out of the unusual happened. I spent my days playing with my dog and snowboarding. In the evenings, I played PlayStation or listened to music, drank and smoked out on the balcony. I had already stocked up on food, cigarettes and liquor, so I was pretty much shut in aside from occasionally hitting the slopes. With my dog as company and DVDs slash PlayStation as entertainment, I was quite content and started to feel relaxed after all the earlier drama. The cabin itself was two stories, the bottom story had a living room and a side guest bedroom, along with a small kitchen. The upstairs had another two rooms, along with a walkout balcony attached to the master bedroom. Most of my time was spent either in the living room, kitchen, or master bedroom. I never ventured into the other rooms, and always kept the doors leading into them shut. When the third day came around, I was going through my usual routine of playing with my dog, playing games, and watching DVDs. That day it was a pretty heavy snowfall, so I did not feel like trekking down the hill to the main road and decided to stay in. That's when things started getting weird. In our area, there are only two other cabins adjacent to ours, maybe a block away from each other. 
All other cabins aside from those two were around a mile away from ours. Surrounding us on all sides was mostly forest and very tall pine trees. Both of the other two cabins were empty, and from the past couple of days, I knew that no one else was staying there. Around midday, while outside with my dog, I noticed what looked like footprints in the snow around the area surrounding our cabin. It was still snowing, so the prints looked fresh, as if someone had been there in the last 30 minutes. I thought that maybe someone was staying in one of the nearby cabins, and that I may not have noticed. Perhaps they were shut-ins like me. The footprints led away from my cabin, and they disappeared in the snow towards the denser part of the trees. I disregarded the prints and went back inside. Nighttime came around, and I decided to head to bed. My dog Midnight was lying on the bed with me when I noticed his ears perk up. Midnight quickly jumping off the bed and ran downstairs to the living room. I lay in bed and stayed silent. I could hear him moving around back and forth. After around five minutes, he ran back upstairs and started to do his doggy dance for the sign that he had to pee or wanted to go outside. I can't say no to him. So we both went downstairs to the outside driveway for him to do his thing. Only, he didn't want to pee. As soon as we were outside, he started to pull on the leash, trying to drag me to where he wanted to go. He kept looking into the dense part of the trees where we had seen the prints earlier, but he also kept sniffing the side of the house and looking up towards the roof. After he figured out that I was not going where he wanted, he sat himself down and just stared into the darkness. This behavior was unusual for him, but maybe there are forest animals that he wants to chase down. I pulled him back inside, and we both headed back upstairs. Around half an hour later, I was lying in bed when I heard what sounded like hooves walking on my roof. It was only a series of around six steps, and I rationalized that it could be a pine cone falling from a tree onto the roof, or maybe a forest animal running around. But here's the thing. The steps seemed to be spaced apart like human strides. It was freaking me out. Midnight also heard the noise and was quick to run to the balcony door, expecting me to let him out. You know, I'm a tough guy, and at the time considered myself to be well-built and strong enough to handle myself. I grabbed my coat and shoes, along with my cigarettes and flashlight, and went out onto the balcony. As soon as I was outside, I lit up my cigarette and started canvassing the roof with my light. Nothing there, and the snow on top were undisturbed. Weird. Must have been all in my head. What about midnight hearing the noise? Maybe he was feeding off my fear. I started to calm down and relax again. My eyes began to adjust to the darkness, and I kept smoking and just staring at the stars and trees next to our cabin. That's when I saw it. In a tree that was a little taller than our cabin, and around 20 feet from the balcony, I saw what looked like a man crouched in a squatting position in between two branches. It squatted on one branch, and its arms were extended above its head, holding onto the branch above it. What the fuck is that? I wasn't sure if I was actually seeing this thing, and stood just staring motionless. I noticed Midnight stand up and start pacing behind me and lightly barking at the same time. The thing did not move. I put my cigarette out and was debating on shining the light in the thing's direction, but something in my head kept screaming not to. So I walked backward to the inside of the room and pulled Midnight with me. Once inside, I locked the door and shined the light in the thing's direction, but there was nothing there. I shut the curtains to the door and retreated to bed, but later on in the night, I heard a light tapping at the balcony door, like someone was tapping on the glass with his fingers. It was consistent and did not stop for nearly an hour. Midnight stared at the door, but he wouldn't go near it anymore. The weirdest part was that I had a feeling like someone was inviting me to open the door. But at the same time, I kept hearing my dad's voice in my head telling me to stay in bed. I listened to my dad's voice and stayed put. I passed out eventually and woke up in the morning with everything back to normal. The rest of the week was non-eventful and nothing else out of the ordinary happened. A lot of stuff was going on at the time. I was pretty fucked up from all the drama. I admit that maybe it was all going on in my head. Living in an apartment with three roommates at the time, I was working all sorts of weird hours and would stay up late most nights. Our apartment had two hallways that formed a capital L. My room was at the top of the L. The bathroom was in the corner where the lines meet, with the door being in the inside middle of the small section. In the outside corner was the living room, 
I walked out of my room to go to the bathroom. No need to turn the light on, as this was a trek that I had made hundreds of times before. As I left the bathroom, I turned to go back to my room. Just as I turned off the bathroom lights, there, standing where the short hallway and the living room meet, was a teenage girl. She was wearing a white flowery dress, just smiling. She didn't look evil, just a normal person standing there smiling at me. I freaked the fuck out and went running for my room. About 20 minutes I finally came out of my room, turning all the lights on as I went through the apartment. The girl was nowhere to be seen, however, where she was standing was noticeably colder, much colder than was normal for an August evening. Creepy, but not the worst part. I lived there for about another year, and I never saw her again. After I had moved out, I was hanging out with my one roommate who had the bedroom at the end of the small hallway, right next to the bathroom. We were talking, and I told him that I never felt comfortable in the apartment after something happened. To which he responded, Oh, you saw her too? I nearly drove off the road when I heard this. We then both described her, finishing off each other's sentences describing her appearance. He had seen her twice. I was indifferent about ghosts before that. Now I believe in them, or believe in something. I saw a shadow person once. I didn't know the name until much later. I was living in a house in Laguna Beach that had been there since the 1920s. In its history, it had been a speakeasy, a brothel, and a house for smuggling illegal immigrants. One day, my new wife and I were having an argument. She walked down the block to get a cup of coffee and cool off, leaving me alone in the house. The construction of the house was incredibly haphazard. The bedroom and living room were on one side, then a bathroom with two entrances. On the other side of the bathroom was a hallway that had windows on one side and two bedrooms on the other. From my bedroom, I could look across the hall into the bathroom, then through the bathroom and down the other hall. I was standing at my dresser, and I noticed movement out of the corner of my eye. There was a black figure. It was maybe three feet tall, and it was only vaguely humanoid. It looked like black scribbles, like someone had scratched a human shape, but the scribbles moved like electricity arcing. There was no sound that I could remember. I distinctly recall that when I saw it, I wasn't afraid, just curious. Then it noticed me looking at it. I can't say it turned around, it just focused on me. Then I was scared. I didn't move, didn't scream. I froze. It just came at me. It rushed down the hall towards me. I have no idea what it intended, but as soon as it entered the bathroom, the door closest to me slammed shut. Then I screamed. I yelled for my wife. She wasn't home. I went outside into the daylight and didn't go back in until my wife returned ten minutes later. I grew up in the Arctic. In the town that I lived in, as long as it was a clear night, it was extremely normal to see all sorts of lights move across the sky. Keep in mind the winter is long in the Arctic, which means extended amounts of time spent under the stars. It's quite beautiful, as long as you don't mind the cold. Sometimes, I would drive a snowmobile a few kilometers out of town, shut it down, and just lay down on the snow looking up at the majesty of it all, the only thing disturbing the silence being the occasional breeze. The northern lights are also a common occurrence. Doesn't happen every day, but often enough that they start getting ignored after a while, as long as they aren't too spectacular. On one particular night, I decided to go on one of my midnight rides out of town. I drove a few kilometers over the hills to find a spot devoid of light pollution from town, shut off the machine, and settled into a good spot to look up and be retrospective. It wasn't all that interesting a scene. A few satellites passing here and there, some relatively boring activity affecting the magnetic field, etc. And then I started noticing a clicking noise. At first, I thought it was the sound of the snow machine cooling down. Engines expand and contract a lot in the cold. But the source of the sound wasn't coming from that direction. My next thought was there must be an animal nearby, in which case I need to get out of there fast. But the clicking sound is far too regular for an animal to produce it. It was somewhat mechanical sounding. And again, the source from the sound isn't coming from anywhere around me horizontally. It was coming from up. Naturally, I look up, determined to ascertain the origin of the sound. I see what I always see. Stars, northern lights, a lazy satellite crossing the sky, all the regular stuff. 
But before I dismiss it altogether and begin heading home, I notice something strange in the Aurora Borealis. There were three rather strong points of light. I ignored them at first, thinking they were oddly symmetrical stars, but this proved false. They were getting brighter. I kept staring in fascination as they grew stronger and stronger, yet still only remaining single points in the sky. All the while, the clicking noise is getting louder and more pronounced, almost like someone started tapping a pen on a desk inside my head. Then it stops. The lights are gone, the clicking stops, and aside from being a little stiff, cold, and petrified, I'm fine. I jump back on the snowmobile thinking I might be going crazy. The machine took a bit longer than usual to start up, and I'm beginning to worry, but soon it's running and I'm heading back into town. As I'm driving, several plausible scenarios are running through my head. I think it could have been a helicopter from the mine, or some strange northern lights behavior, etc. Probably not a big deal. I pull up to my house. Lights are all dark. Strange. It wasn't that late when I left. I open the outer door as quietly as possible, remove my winter gear, and enter the inner door. The house is quiet. Really quiet. My parents are teachers and are usually up late marking or watching TV. All I'm thinking is that I have to get to bed without anyone noticing. Sneaking in proves to be easy as I'm soon under my covers. I go to set my alarm for the next day. Suddenly, everything makes sense. The engine was hard to start, stiff, rather chilly. Nobody was up after I got home after being gone for what felt like a relatively short period. It was almost 11 p.m. when I left, and now it was creeping up on 6 a.m. I stood, staring at clicking lights for approximately seven hours. I never ended up sleeping that night, and I don't go on late-night snow machine rides anymore. <laughs>